What's up everyone? Today we're taking a second look at the El Goose Centauri Carbon. Is it worth the $2.99 price tag? Let's find out. It's been about two weeks since I received the El Goose Centauri Carbon and at $2.99 this could be one of the best priced printers in the market. We're going to go over some of the pros and cons of the printer. I'm going to do a few comparisons. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get right into the cons. The first con I had was the shipping wasn't that great. Um, Elgu has addressed this in their Facebook group. They said that they've made stronger reinforced packaging, whatever that means. So I, in my first video, I actually thought that this wasn't a possibility for them to fix, but they're, they're saying they're going to address it. So you can see here with mine, it doesn't sit flat. It took a really hard bang in the shipping. I did reach out to Elgu and they've completely re replaced this top frame. I'm going to replace this real quick and let you guys know how easy it was. Um, if you guys have this issue, if you do pre-order the new one, hopefully it's not an issue going forward, which it sounds like it, they don't think it will be, but let's replace it real quick. Okay. So I was going to come back as soon as I fixed the door, but there's this screw here. There's so many screws. I was literally super gluing, but the, the Allen screws basically was stripped. And when I started undoing this bolt right here, I thought, you know, it might just come off and it's another screw so I can get the door off, but it literally snapped. So if I set this down real quick and we're looking at this, like the screw was so stripped, like that's why it looks like that. I was trying to super glue, but it looks like the hinge part snapped. I think there's a mod you can do in order to like make the door swing out further, which is probably what I'm going to have to do. Or I can reach out to Elegoo and see if they'll just provide another spot like that. So for now, we're going to be without a door, but let me get this put back together. All right, so I got it all back together. It took me way longer, but this now is fixed. I'm just without a door, which I think Uncle Jesse had a video where you can print some hinges and you can flip it all the way out. So I... Uh, and it was kind of my fault. Maybe I should have stopped when I found out that the hex screw was stripped, but what can you do? While we're in the printer, the con, the next con, you can barely see it, but where the extruder is back there, it's extremely hard to see. And as you can see now, how, how would you tell if you have black filament in there and it's extruding? It's extremely difficult. This is more of an annoyance though it, than anything. Another con I would say is with the filament sensor being right here and we're going through the back, if I lift up the lid, it's putting a lot of pressure on that white tube where the filament will be loaded. So you really got to push it pretty hard sometimes to get it down in there. I know there's some fixes for this, but guys, I'm, I'm reviewing this printer stock and as it comes. As far as the light, like it's, I'm in an extremely well lit area, so. <laughs> I mean, you can see this. I'm like trying to make it dark in this printer, but it's like already lit up. But really, what what is that light gonna do? Like it's it's barely like reflecting off the camera. Um, I I don't see this as a big deal. I always can turn the lights on wherever I'm printing, and I don't really check on my prints. I just set it and forget it. I did turn the lights off in here outside of my garage light, and you can see like it it doesn't get to the back corner and. It's even like reflecting off of there to get into that back corner. But like, <laughs> again, don't, don't count on using this light to check on your prints. I would definitely install an LED strip. As far as cons or things to be aware of, I did have an issue where it would just say anomaly happened and the whole print would just stop. Um, the only option it would give you on the actual control here is to reboot. And when you hit reboot, it's just like nothing ever happened. It's just like rebooting the printer for the first time. Uh, if you haven't used it in a while or something, it, it would just say nothing. You couldn't resume your prints. You couldn't do anything. One fix I found to that is if you just powered it off, it would give you like the power loss setting to try to resume your print. I did it one time, and but there was a blob on the extruder that I didn't notice. And when I resumed my print, it just, it, it wasn't pretty guys. Like it just shot everything everywhere. Um, you can see that short also, I posted it on YouTube and on TikTok. It, it, it just, it, it's really preventing me from doing really large prints on this printer until I know the anomaly issue is fixed. Now, if you're someone who's in like the June batch or the May batch, I, I'm hoping that that's fixed before they start sending everything out to people. Just like the shipping thing, it should be fixed 
hopefully not everyone's having issues with uh, broken glass anymore. Uh, but it, it is a big deal though to not be able to print those big prints and do like the battle droid stuff. Um, if it's taking over 24 hours, I'm very hesitant to do stuff. I mean, very few things are going to take over 24 hours on this printer. And I didn't have any issues really if it was a shorter print um, with the anomaly happening. And I've done some screws on the top. They said maybe it was a connection between the print head and uh, it's like a USB cable. So I tightened down those screws and it, it still happened. So that's one thing to be aware of. But if you join the Elegoo Centauri Facebook group, they are aware of it and Elegoo has been posting about it and they're really, really trying to dive into the issue because it's probably honestly a software issue um, and maybe one or two updates and Elegoo will have that fixed. So I'm not too concerned about that long term, but in the meantime, I am printing some shorter prints uh, just because I had that issue and, and maybe I'll try it again and it's fixed. Maybe it's an Elegoo slicer issue. I don't know, but they're aware of it and I think it'll be fixed before everyone else gets their print. So before we go into more of the positives, I want to show you guys some additional prints out that, that aren't shown on my other video. This was a Photos Mint bust of the Mandalorian. This was printed without supports. You can see there's some stringing there that's to be kind of expected. But overall, the print came out pretty good. It's, it's what you expect, right? It's an FDM printer. They all kind of print the same. Like, honestly, once you have them dialed in. And I also printed this... Uh, for it. So this is at, I believe, 125% size. I, I don't remember how long it took, but I just want to get some prints in to show you guys what this printer is capable of. A lot of you guys also are looking at minis. So I did print a mini from Loot Studios. Let me grab that. Um, part of the hammer that broke here, but you can see, like, I'm trying to bring this up real close. The detail on this is really good. This is a 32 millimeter mini. Don't mind my dirty hands because I was working on the printer. Um, but overall, like I, I only broke the hammer because of the supports. The supports were hard to get. But I mean, there is some slight stringing there. You can see. But this only took 45 minutes. And look at the detail on this thing. This was printed at 0.12 layer height. I'd be pretty happy because if you if you were buying this to print for D&D &D and print minis and print tiles, like you can basically do everything on this printer is and, and you can work with the orientation on these things to maybe make it so that hammer doesn't break. But I, I could have super glued it back on it. The hammer came out pretty well. Another print I did was this uh, battle droid piece for my life size battle droid video coming soon, guys. But I it stopped right here. And this is where I use some E6000 to print it up. The print was coming out great all the way up until it just randomly stopped with that anomaly. But then I just, you know, I drug down the STL and started printing from where I thought it stopped. And it, it still came out pretty good. But I'm still very hesitant to do large prints on this printer until that anomaly issue has been fixed. Or at least they found the, you know, what, what's what been going wrong with those prints. As you guys saw, the prints, they, they come out pretty good. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with anything that I've been printing on this. Uh, the setup does take a really long time. It took me like 45 minutes for the initial run of this printer to get it leveled and everything. But since then, I have not leveled or at least gone through the setup again once. I always recommend, honestly, it takes a little bit longer, but doing the leveling before the print starts, you're going to run into less issues that way. At least that, that's my opinion, right? Uh, a lot of people, they just print it and let it go. I think you could do that with this printer, but I prefer just to wait an extra five minutes for my print to have it self-level before every print. Um, I haven't had really any issues with the filament holder being on the side here and extruder. Let me put that back in. Uh, it, like I said before, it is a little tough getting into the extruder, but as far as like it's stopping and sensing the filament run out, I, I haven't had any issues with it continuing to print. They've been pretty good it, since the filament runs out. So even with it being on the side and not in the actual extruder head, I haven't had any issues when it runs out, reload it, let the printer go. I haven't had any issues there. Um, you know, overall, I think it's a great printer for $299. Uh, time will tell if these are good for print farms in comparison to the P1S because, you know, they are cheaper parts. Um, I think even just looking at my Bamboo A1, the Bamboo A1 looks a little bit more uh, quality, at least on the printing portions. 
Um, there is a lot of screws though holding this together when I was replacing the top. Um, it is, I, I guess it is well built. Like I'm just sitting here trying to come up with thoughts and like more even negatives to kind of turn people away from buying it as a beginner, but I really can't. I think this is probably the best beginner printer you can buy. The downside being, right, it doesn't have AMS yet and it doesn't have it in, in, in stock order. You can go and purchase the Bamboo A1 right now and I think you'll be completely satisfied with that. But I think you might be happier waiting for this if you don't need the multicolor. So in July, when this starts shipping to everybody, I think you'll be really satisfied with this printer. I, I can't really think of anything that they're not going to fix before it starts shipping out. I'm assuming the anomaly issue gets fixed. They've said they're gonna have better packaging. So hopefully people don't get the destroyed doors and the dents in the back. I mean, overall it's good, right? I, I'm personally not a spec guy, so I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, can it do this, print this fast? It prints faster than the Bamboo A1, with the Bamboo A1 being a bed slinger. But guys, and again, you guys are, you got really mad at me for posting a short compared to Bamboo A1 to the Centauri Carbon. This is $299, and that is $360. Like, guys, $60 more for the bed slinger. I think I should be able to compare it to the, the Bamboo A1. But I think this is better than the Bamboo A1. Once they get all the kinks wired out, I think overall this is going to be better. And I, I really hope it is. I hope that when you know people have print farms with this potentially, that the parts are more readily available. I've never had an issue with LLU customer support as well. I think you're buying from a good company that actually cares about the people. I don't know. I don't have any complaints. So what do you guys think? I think I would recommend this to any beginner once it becomes in stock. It's hard to recommend a printer if it's not in stock. Because if, you, if you're just getting into 3D printing, you want to do it now. You don't want to wait for the pre-order. And I think that's, unfortunately, we're waiting for the pre-order. The 199 version of the Centauri could, could also potentially be a great buy as well. Um, I haven't printed any ABS or anything like that. If, if I was, the door would be more of a big issue for me right now. I'm not too worried about it, um, but I might have to print those hinges in like an ABS or a pet sheet. We'll see. But let me know what you guys think. Hit that subscribe button for more content, that battle droid build that he got a little bit of a sneak preview of. And again, let me know in the comments, are you purchasing this printer? Did you purchase this printer? Or do you not agree with me at all? Thanks, guys.